Now available in paperback and e-readers. John Haynes, 1987. Learn lessons about life and teenage love in the 1980s in this coming-of-age John Haynes story. Get your copy of John Haynes, 1987 in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. A 14-year-old black boy was allegedly shot and killed by an Asian gas station owner who allegedly accused him of stealing some water. All news footage in this video is used under fair use of United States copyright law of 1976 and is used in conjunction with my commentary. Fortunately, we have some breaking news to share with you. We're starting in Richland County where the Sheriff's Department is charged a gas station owner with murder in the shooting death of a 14-year-old boy. The incident happened last night around 8 on Spring Tree Drive off of Park Lane Road in Northeast Columbia. Yeah, the coroner has now identified that boy as Cyrus Carmack Belton. And we do have team coverage tonight of this shooting, including a big community reaction. We're going to start with News 19's Becky Buds, who is live outside the Richland County Sheriff's Department with more. Becky. Andrea, according to the Sheriff's Department, Rick Chow turned himself in just before 3 o'clock. Sheriff Lott says they conducted the investigation as quickly as possible and needed to get all of the facts straight before they charged the store owner. A tragic incident occurred that the person responsible is being arrested and charged appropriately. Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott announcing the arrest of a gas station owner who's been charged with murder for the shooting death of 14-year-old Cyrus Carmack Belton. It's just one of these things you just stand up here and you shake your head because you just don't, you just, there's just no reason for something like that to happen. Lott says around 8 p.m. Sunday night, Carmack Belton went inside a Shell gas station on Park Lane Road near Spring Tree Drive. According to the sheriff, the owner identified as Rick Chow accused the teen of shoplifting bottles of water. However, Lott says the teen had put them back in the cooler. Lott stated after a verbal confrontation, Chow and his son chased Carmack Belton down the street. The teen fell, but got back up and ran. Authorities said Chow's son told his dad Carmack Belton was armed and Chow shot Carmack Belton in the back as he was running away. According to Lott, Carmack Belton was armed with a gun, which was later recovered by deputies near his body. But they determined the gun was not pointed at the men and that the teen was shot in the back, facing away from them. Community members like Sharon Pettigrew are in mourning. Anytime a life is um, taken for, for no cause or something so simple, um, I'm going to protest and I'm going to speak up about it. Chow is expected to appear in court tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Reporting live in Columbia, Becky Buds, News 19 WLTX. Now, according to police reports from Columbia, South Carolina's Sheriff's Office, 58-year-old Rick Chow allegedly wound up shooting 14-year-old Cyrus Carmack Belton in the back after he allegedly made an accusation that the boy was stealing water from his store. Now, according to the reports from the Columbia, South Carolina Sheriff's Office, 14-year-old Cyrus Carmack Belton went into Rick Chow's store, and as he went into the store, he went into a cooler and picked up four bottles of water. And as he was picking up these four bottles of water, Rick Chow made an allegation that he was stealing the water and an altercation ensued. And as this altercation ensued, allegedly Cyrus Carmack Belton, the 14 year old boy, put the bottles back in the cooler and had left the property and was running away as Rick Chow and his son allegedly were chasing him out, out on the street. And as they were chasing him out on the street, this is where Rick Chow allegedly pulled out a firearm and wound up shooting 14-year-old Cyrus Carmack Belton in the back. And after shooting him in the back, this is how the boy wound up losing his life. Now, the 
Columbia, South Carolina Sheriff's Department sees this as an isolated incident, but when I take a critical examination of the alleged behavior that Rick Chow and his son allegedly participated in, it fits the pattern and profile for beta males that I talk about in my book, The Man Crisis. And it's clear to me that this racist Asian man was one that basically was living in a rose-colored reality. And as he was living in that rose-colored reality, he saw all black people as dangerous and was alleged to have been extremely rude and nasty to many of the customers, regardless of race, and basically was one of these individuals who, as I see it, is um, suffering from what I see as beta male paranoia, because oftentimes, because beta males live in a rose-colored reality, whenever they see somebody who does not fit into their smooth world, what these individuals do is try to look for a reason to go out here and do harm to those individuals. And that's what I believe happened here as related to Cyrus Carmack Belton, the 14-year-old boy who went into this store to go purchase some water. I believe that this 14-year-old boy basically walked into Rick Chow's world and as he saw this black boy entering his world, what he wanted to do was go out here and see him as a threat. And he was looking for a reason to go out here and neutralize the threat of this black boy as related to his world. And that's why he escalated a situation as related to this alleged theft of water that really did not happen because the boy basically put the water back into the cooler and once he put the water back into the cooler he was no longer a threat to any property and since he was no threat to the property this is where we see how rich chow basically went from trying to defend his property to committing a felony because once an individual winds up leaving your property and they are leaving the property it's where the owner cannot go out here and say he's defending himself from a threat because once the individual is fleeing the scene what happens is if you take out a firearm and then fire it at that individual striking them in the back then that is first degree murder with malice of forethought and this is what happened in the case of rick chow as related to Cyrus Carmack Belton, he basically murdered this boy based on what is presented here with malice of forethought because there was no threat from this boy, even though he, the law enforcement did find a firearm on his person, he was not looking to fire at Rick Chow or provide any sort of threat because the weapon was never used and it was the amount of force that it was used that constitute the charge of first degree murder being levied in this case because with Rick Chow's alleged actions he basically showed again intent and malice of forethought as related to taking this boy's life and when I look at this whole situation as related to Rick Chow's behavior in his store this basically is the kind of racial profiling that even I have encountered going into these stores owned by many of these foreigners. What happens is many of these foreigners have a perception of heterosexual black boys as being some sort of threat and being some sort of criminal based on many, much of the media they have imbibed and they want to go out here and believe they can neutralize that threat in order to make their world smooth. However, when I look at these kind of cases, again, this is one of the reasons why I say most black people, we need to not go into these stores owned by these racists like Asians and other individuals, because if they don't value us as person, then we don't need to spend, then it doesn't make sense for us to spend our dollars in their establishments. And as articles have stated, this individual basically was considered to be an extremely mean and nasty person 
who really had no respect for the customers and since he was nasty and rude there was no reason to go out here and spend your black dollars in that business because if somebody can't respect you they don't deserve to have your money and this is something many young brothers and sisters need to understand we need to start staying out of these foreign owned businesses because every time we go into one of these businesses that don't respect us we are lowering our value as people and letting people believe that they can treat us as second-class citizens and this is something many beta males like to do because this is how beta males get power many beta males they want people to fit into their smooth world because they want to have power over those people and what this may what this guy wanted to do was he wanted to take power by taking the life of this 14 year old boy and because he felt that this 14 year old boy's life was worth less than a couple of bottles of water he believed that he had a right to take this boy's life even though there was no evidence that this boy had stolen anything i mean once that water was back inside of the case that meant that there was that you could just leave this boy alone but this guy didn't want to leave this boy alone because he wanted to be able to have his world smooth and he wanted to get the power as related to taking a black life he wanted to get that power by saying he could go out here and take a black boy's life and again this case is quite troubling because it fits a pattern of racial profiling that has gone on for over 60 years i mean i've run into that type of racial profiling in stores and when i look at the case of this young boy it just reminds me of what happened to trayvon martin as related to his encounter with george zimmerman and the legal precedent of George Zimmerman taking the life of Trayvon Martin is the reason why we have this incident that happened right here. Because I believe if we had a conviction as related to George Zimmerman, we would have seen a legal precedent set that would have set a boundary as related to protecting the rights of black boys and black men. And I believe if we had President Obama at the time put federal civil rights charges on George Zimmerman, this would have set a legal precedent that would have set a boundary that possibly could have saved the life of this young man. I believe that if there had been some sort of legal precedent, Cyrus Carmack Dalton would be alive today. And many of these racists like Rick Chow would think twice before they go out here and think to take out a gun and try to take somebody's life over something as trivial as a couple of bottles of water. Because I find it quite troubling that people would say that a black boy's life is worth more worth less than water and this is the sad troubling thing about this incident it's really troubling to me that this person put some water over the life of a black per of a black person and again just shows me how racist this individual is and shows me how just twisted this individual is because while a store owner does have a right to defend their property once that person leaves the property without any of their merchandise they have no right to go out here and use force and again this force even in the case of a alleged incident was far beyond excessive because you do not need to take out a firearm and shoot a person in the back because if you shoot a person in the back that shows that this person was not able to defend themselves and again that really again proves the point about this being first degree murder and beta males love to go out here and commit these kind of crimes again because they feel inadequate about themselves they feel inadequate about their 
whole sense of power and they again want to take their power by taking a life because they get a rush from taking that power and they believe if they take that power they can go out here and feel like a man unfortunately i believe rick chow isn't going to be feeling like a man if the courts are out here to meet out actual justice instead of giving a pass to another racist i believe if the courts go out here and punish rick chow he will learn how how much of a wimp he actually is as he's sent to the penitentiary for life in prison and he has to run into lifers like bubba tiny roscoe and big dave and as they're ramming the egg roll into the tight end and turning it into a wide receiver, he's going to learn that he that he basically threw away his freedom over something as trivial as water. And as he's in there getting turned out by Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, Big Dave, Melvin, and Mr. Sprinkles, and he's going to be traded for Little Debbie Snack Cakes, Raymond Noodles, Packets of Crystal Light, Peppermint Gumballs, Marshmallow Peeps, Kit Kat Candy Bars, Off-Brand Lemon Cookies, Off-Brand Oreo Cookies, Off-Brand Duplex Cookies, and pa and and packets and um, packages of um strawberry milk. That's what's going to happen to this guy if our criminal justice system is fair, because what happened here as related to Cyrus Carmack Belton was first degree murder as I see it and it's another reason why black people need to stop going and shopping at these stores owned by these racist foreigners and we need to go out here and start participating in group economics because as we feed racists like this we go out here and wind up allowing ourselves to send a message that oppression is acceptable and if we want to take our respect we've got to start taking our black dollars and we've got to start taking our black dollars and spending them with black owned businesses because the way we deal with racists like this is we starve racists like this because these racists again in their world we are nothing we are less than we don't have value so it doesn't make sense for us to spend our dollars with a rude and nasty racist no we don't need to keep fostering these codependent relationships with racists like this because these racists they're men in crisis and we need to let them be men in crisis they want their world to be smooth without us in it then we need to stop spending our dollars in their businesses and let them go on and go broke and let them go out of business because they don't the whole thing is if we want respect we've got to take it and we take it by keeping our dollars out of these businesses because yes this 14 year old boy again might have had a firearm on him but there was no reason to take his life because he was no direct threat to anyone and again when i look at this whole situation again it shows me how little has changed since the death of trayvon martin and sadly since the death of trayvon martin i've seen sadly more black teenage boys be threat seen as a threat by guys like this and these guys look to use lethal force as related to much to something as trivial as water and again if they look to do this and take your life as related to water then we as black people need to really rethink how we spend our dollars inside of these white and non-black establishments now if you want to learn more about what leads to individuals like this winding up becoming dysfunctional like this and racist like this you can pick up my book the man crisis on amazon.com in paperback and kindle format you can also find the man crisis at other online booksellers like smashwords the ibook store and google play and if you want to see me make more videos like this you can send a donation to my patreon my paypal or my cash app by clicking the links in the description box that's all i have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe now available in paperback and kindle unlimited the man crisis Learn why so many men are struggling to find their way in an increasingly gynocentric world in 
The Man Crisis. Get your copy of The Man Crisis in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.